Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we are looking at Waves Studio Rack and why you should use it in your DAW or broadcast rig. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So I'm going to try and make this video quick. Uh, I'm going to kind of fly through these options and then I can do follow-up videos if you want. Um, but what is Waves Studio Rack? If you are using Waves plugins in a DAW, um, this is a plugin host with a whole bunch of extra features. Um, and number one reason why you should use it is because it's free, which is a price that I like to pay. Um, so it's awesome. It's free. Number two is it's cross-platform. What that means is not only would it work on Mac and PC, but it will work in uh, different DAWs. So I have it open today in Logic, but I use it in Studio One. I'm assuming it would work in Pro Tools as well. Uh, so what's really cool about that is if you have a large plugin chain, like you see right here right now, I have six, you know, it could be as many as eight or more um, plugins ready to go. Instead of me having eight plugins in my mixer view, um, if you're on a laptop, that will add up and take up more space and change the way your mixer looks. This is really nice and tidy um, because I can just see that one plug in there and inside of that is where all the magic is happening. So I find that especially useful if you're on a small screen or on a laptop um, that is really, really useful. Also, as I mentioned, it's very good with categorization. Your DAW may or may not be in this regard, but in here we can see if I click on an open spot here, I've got different um, categories of plugins uh, and I can go through and find what I'm looking for or what I have available. Or if I know what I want, but I don't know where it is, I can just type in like 2A and then here is my uh, LA2A. I can just click on that and now it's available to me. So that makes things really quick and easy. Uh, next, we're going to talk about parallel processing, which a lot of people really like. Imagine that this is a drum group and that maybe we want to do like parallel processing on it um, and have a heavily compressed and a not so compressed channel, have them all come together. This makes that really easy. Um, so we're going to go and click on an open uh, plugin strip here. We're going to go to parallel. And this is so powerful. First off, um, I've got up to eight different parallel strips I can work with. Each can have eight plugins in it. So crazy times. They can be stereo, which is what we'd want for a drum compressor. Um, but you could also do just the left side, right side, just the mids, the sides. There's so many cool things that you could do with this. So I'm going to turn both of them on. To make sure I'm not tricked with volume, I'm going to drop the level down so you have independent level control. Sorry, negative three. We'll do the same thing with this guy, negative three. While I'm down here, you also have width control, so you can make something mono a little bit wider. You can invert it. Um, it's like a low power S1 imager. Um, so, you know, you can get some pretty cool stuff with that for free, which is great. Obviously, you can pan things left and right. Very, very handy. So in here, let's say that this first strip, I want to have little to no compression. And this second strip here, I can go and say, let's, uh, let's just do like maybe the H comp. Cool. And I can make this guy slam, level them out together, and now it's all self-contained in one plugin strip. Um, let's say I want to go even a little bit further and maybe throw on an EQ before the H comp. I can drag that down. And then let's add, say, the F6. And now I have an F6, and that's only affecting the compressed side, not affecting the uncompressed side. So there's really cool things you can do with that. Similar but different is multiband compression and uh, processing. So we can go to multiband split. You can do up to five crossover points uh, on this. So let's say, for example, that I want to um, gate a snare drum differently for the high end and the low end. Now I've done similar videos on this where you can get a snappier sounding snare drum with still maintaining um, more sustain by doing something similar to this. So um, I'm making this up, but let's say I wanna do this at 1K. So 
1K and below will be affected by this channel strip and above will be affected by this channel strip. I can then go in here and let's just type in the word gate. And there's the C1 gate, that'll work for me. And so let's say we set this for the low end and we give it a little bit of a extra release time so we get that nice low end sustain from the snare drum. Um, and then I can copy and paste. And then for the top end, maybe we'll make it a little bit snappier and give it a shorter release time. Maybe we'll change that to be an expander instead of a gate. There's all kinds of cool things you can do that will only affect 1K and above. Um, you could do this in a regular DAW, but you would have to make a whole bunch of different plugins and strips and it would be just kind of messy. Again, by doing it here, it's all self-contained in Studio Rack and makes things really, really easy. All right. Next, let's talk about latency readout. Now, this may or may not mean anything to you if you are just doing studio stuff, um, but in the live world, if you're trying to use Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools, and use them in a live environment, a lot of times those DAWs will not auto-compensate when they are not playing back. So in the real world, um, if you were to add, say, a, uh, well, in this case, the L1 limiter, let's look at this. So if I right-click on this, I can scroll down, and I can see that this particular plugin is adding 64 samples of latency. Um, and the entire strip is 64 samples. So this is the only plugin that's adding latency. If I were to have this on one channel and not compensate on the others, there might be some sort of phasing or flaming issue um, that will come up. So what's cool about Studio Rack is you can see, I can very quickly see how much latency is happening and I can either remove the offending plugins or change them around or add them to other strips so that everything hits at the same time. Um, I'm not going to go any further into that because it's a big subject, but it's just really cool that you can see it in one spot in the plugin. Some DAWs are better at that than others, so that's why it's nice just to have this for whatever DAW you're in. All right, finally, still keeping on um, that subject, um, you'll notice that my limiter here uh, is causing 64 uh, samples of latency, but it's not even on. Um, it's, uh, it's bypassed at the moment. Now it's on, now it's off. So let's talk real quick about your bypass and disable options. Um, this is really cool. So when you're in bypass mode, where the light is just not on or is on, um, that will just affect the audio. Um, so if I have it off, it's still processing the audio, but you're not actually hearing the effect until you turn it on. So whether or not that is uh, bypassed or not, it will still cause that 64 samples of latency. Um, the other option here, if I right click on this, is to disable plugin. Now when you disable plugin, you see that the um, lights of, or the text has gone to italics. If the light was on, it would turn off automatically. And now if I right click on that, I can see my rack latency is zero because this guy is there, but it's not processing the sound and it's not doing any kind of CPU drain on my computer. Now, what I like to do is turn off all my plugins with bypass and then disable them all. And this is how I start with my channel strip. So I can just drag and drop this across all my channels. Everything that I might need as a default is there. Again, it's the bare minimum amount of CPU drag because none of them are actually doing anything. The only thing that's happening is like the input and output gain, and that's really it. Um, but then, let, so let's say I put this as a default across my all my channels, so it's on my keyboard, and maybe the keyboard sounds great on its own, so I don't initially need to do anything to it. But then as the mix is going, um, something may happen, and I find, oh, you know, he's got an organ patch now, and it's super, you know, heavy in 2K. Well, I can go and disable, or sorry, re-enable um, my F6, turn it on, and now I have that plugin operating. Um, so where this is really useful is a lot of times in Logic, for example, is the same way. If I just bypass the channel strip, it only turns off the effect of it on the audio, but it's still processing and using up my CPU. 
So being able to go in the plugins and actually disable them and have them not drag is a huge benefit. I hope this has been helpful for somebody. Again, using Studio Rack is great because it's free. Uh, it's cross-platform, so work on different DAWs with no problem. Uh, it's very tidy. It's very organized. Uh, you can do parallel processing, multiband processing. It has a latency readout, which is super helpful and it can do actual plugin disable. So if you have any other suggestions or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.